That's a fish, baby. This is what we're gonna use to preserve our fish. You can use this kind of stuff as a fire starter. Oh, he's running. Oh, no, 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 no. Guys, welcome to another episode. We are up in the mountains. We're doing a 48 hour survival challenge. I'm backpacking up to a couple lakes and we're gonna be fishing there. We're gonna be fly fishing, bobber fishing, all the good stuff. We're gonna have to filter and purify our own water. And we're gonna have to catch our own food. The only food I brought along actually for 48 hours is some salt, some butter, and one potato. Cause I need like a little bit of carbs, come on. Uh, this is not like a known lake, really. This is kind of more like just a backwoods, no name uh, place that I found has some giant trout in it. Ever since being there, I wanted to come back because these fish should be bigger this year. I've got a map with me. I've got all sorts of safety gear with me. You guys can see I am carrying, carrying a gun for bear protection. We'll take a look at that later. There's a fish down there. I see. I saw him snap at the fly twice. Unfortunately, didn't hook up on him either time. We still got a lot of ways to hike uh, to get up to that lake, and we still got a lot of fishing to do, so. I wish I knew more about some of the plants out here. I'm walking by a bunch of uh, little ferns that are like curled up. I saw them in one of Mav's uh, videos. If you, I don't know if you guys watch Mav at all. He does like uh, truck camping, and he was eating some fern heads. I don't know, I'm seeing a whole bunch of them. Not sure if they're edible though. I'm hungry. I, I really would like to get some plants that we could eat. It is a windy day. Let me show you guys that little fly that I've got. Ooh, a little muddy. Just a little muddy. And that wind is gonna make this tough. Really tough. Ooh, I can see some fish feeding further out there. That's a good thing. Oh, that's a fish. <laughs> that's a fish, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Just a little one. Just a little one. All right, come on. Come on over here. Come on over here. Come here, come here, come here. We got him. We got him, look at that. On the fly, baby. <laughs> we got him, jeez. Oh, he's so beautiful too. Look at him. All right, so before we handle him, we're gonna wet our hand. Uh, their skin is pretty sensitive, so. Look at that. Oh, it's a it's a cutthroat trout. Check out that marking that he has down there. But look at the beautiful colors on him. Don't worry, we'll keep we'll keep him in the water. We'll keep him in the water. He's totally tiny. Let's go ahead and release this guy though. Alright, fly is out. Let's take one last look at him before we release him. And then we'll let him swim off. 
let him breathe for a second. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> That's beautiful. Heck yeah. Man, the sun's about to set. So it's gonna start getting cold too. So what I'm doing on the way to the lake is just looking for uh, some mushrooms as well. It's just in case we don't catch any fish. Oh, whoa, we got, uh, what is this? Ooh. Ah. That might be called a false morel. Not 100% sure, but it's definitely not an edible morel. I'm pretty sure. If it is, and I find out later in the comments that it was an edible morel and I passed on it, I'm gonna be really bummed. When in doubt with mushrooms, never pick them. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave that one there, unharmed. I have to get camp set up. I got it. We are not setting up camp in the dark. Oh, wow. You guys might have noticed on the way here, I was picking up a little bit of this kind of stuff. The other stuff I picked up was black. What this is, they're, they're lichen. You can use this kind of stuff as a fire starter. We're gonna need to be able to light fires for the next couple days. There she is. It looks so perfect in here. I really hope that there's fish. Not seeing any swim around or anything yet. Hopefully that changes. Almost there. Almost there. We're so close. What I'm just doing right now is uh, getting my little bobber rod ready. So here we go. That's just my little Akuma Salilo. It's a two piece, five foot rod. And then I've just got on there a little Cast King Summer 500 reel with like 25 pound braided line on there. Packs down, super small, lightweight, and it's an awesome rod. And the whole setup together is like $60. Our bobber setup is complete. So all we've got here is our bobber stop knot. Then we've got one bead. We've got the bobber, a second bead. We've got our swivel down to a liter. And as you can see, four pieces of split shot. And then down here, we've got our little Little Aberdeen hook right there, panfish hook. It works really good for trout too. So I'm just gonna like cast that out there right now with a worm. What do you guys think about this little guy here? Little red wiggler worm. The way that we're gonna hook up that worm is just slide them all the way up the hook. Get out of there, bug. Look at that mosquito. Jeez, should have used him for bait. And what we're just gonna do is like just, you know, cast it, cast it way out there. Looks like a good spot. I don't want the, the fish taken off with the rod, so we're just gonna set it like right there. Heck, we're gonna keep the bale open too. Now this tent that we're gonna use doesn't actually uh, have any like poles with it, just has some stakes that uses your trekking poles or any sticks that you find in the woods as the, uh, the tent poles. Yeah, so first time using this thing. Now guys, I'm not 100% sure. Not 100% sure, but is this bear poop? Oh, there's more. How did I miss this? How did I miss this on the way in? Seriously? Look at that. Get a nice close look at that. Is that bear poop, guys? It's black poop with... I can't tell what's in there. I'm camping on bear poop. There's bear poop right here and I'm pitching a tent. Oh well. Not that worried about it. It's totally fine that a bear was here at one point. Is he gonna get territorial? Is he marking his territory with the poop or did he just have to poop? Guys, I think our bobber is gone. Where did the bobber go? Oh, it's way back there. Why is it all the way over here? Did the wind pull it there? Or did the fish pull it there? Worm looks surprisingly okay for a fish. Maybe it was just the wind. We got the tent set up. Let's go ahead and just take a little peek inside. This is looking sweet. Heck yeah. Well, that was easy to blow up. Check out this awesome pillow cover. I got this from my dear friend, Michelle. It's a trout pillow cover. This thing's freaking awesome. So thank you, Michelle. I'm gonna just stuff my clothes. There we go. And now we got us a nice little, 
little trout pillow right there that we're gonna use tonight. <laughs> always have some kind of water filtration. I've got a life straw with me, super lightweight. They're super cheap. I think you can pick them up for like 20 bucks or something like that. Just stick it into wherever you're gonna drink from. Oops, with that end. And then just go up here on this end. And just start, start drinking. I like to just spit out the first one. Oh yeah. But after that, it's fair game. And then when you're done drinking with the life straw, what you do then, there we go, just blow out the rest of the water. This is where all that uh, lichen and stuff that we've been collecting is gonna come in handy. It's super fine, it's like hair. So I think this might take a, take a spark really good. Oh, that didn't work too terribly. Ooh, man, this might be challenging. Oh, we got fire. Oh, there we go, there we go. There we go, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Ha <laughs> ha, we did it. <laughs> God, that's satisfying. What I might just do to be able to fish into the night a little bit is I'm going to set up a Carolina rig on here so that we can bottom fish. This is the potato that I brought along. Oh man, that's my dinner. We got a ration, guys. We got a ration. I'm absolutely starving, guys, <laughs> like after hiking that much and then not having any food. All right, there we go. Very exciting. Potato boiling in butter. What I'm thinking is it's time for some Danish sea salt. Lots of it to make this taste. Actually, you know what? I don't want to like totally oversalt it. Nah, screw it. I'm going to oversalt it. That's okay. I'm still kind of like wishfully hoping that a fish bites in the background. On that bottom rig, I'm gonna try this guy here. Mm. Oh yeah. Well guys, this is probably the saddest meal that you've ever seen me cook on my channel, but that's what happens when you don't catch fish, I guess, and you're on a survival challenge. So honestly, I'm super excited about this stuff. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, that'll keep me going tomorrow. We have to hide the food from the bears. So we have this bag that contains our food and then I tied a rock around some paracord. And you always want to do this a ways away from camp. You'll throw the rock up over something. Okay, now we're gonna lower the rock. There we go. So I've got it in a plastic bag that we're gonna use as a trash bag to like pack out our trash and other people's trash that we find in the woods but it also makes a nice sealant to seal the smells of any food you have into that bag so that we just don't attract wildlife in the first place. Now all you gotta do, look at that, is pull that bag up there in the tree. It is tied off safely. Now the bears can't get it. I'm gonna head back to camp now. I'm out in the middle of the woods right now. I'm hearing things, so I don't, I don't wanna be out here. I gotta get back to camp. So before I came in here, I just marked my territory real quick on that front of the camp. So I just peed on a couple logs just to let everyone know that tonight this is this is our turf. Don't know if that works. See you guys in the morning. Sun's just peeking out from behind the trees. We're gonna try and see if we can catch something. Maybe it's just a little early in the season still and these fish are hiding down low. I don't know, maybe, you know, some people found the lake and just completely fished it out. 
um, it'd be a shame. They're not feeding at the surface, so I'm a little hesitant to fly fish. I'm, I'm gonna fly fish just a little bit, just to see what happens. But this is what I got on there right now. I've actually got power bait on there with a little inflated uh, worm. Not like I want to be up here fishing with power bait, but I was just, I've tried, you know, just worms, bobber fishing, bottom fishing, but I just wanted to throw like the best combo I had at them and some power bait that floats with those worms dangling off the bottom. It often be a pretty deadly combo. All right, cast that out one more time. I'm gonna start looking for a little bit of mushrooms. Guys, right as I was just gonna say there's no fish, all of a sudden we got a bite and I just turned off the camera. On the bottom rig here, switch hats. We got a fish on, baby. Oh, sh oh, oh, it's a, oh, it's a giant trout. Giant, it's a, oh geez, it's a football trout. It is a giant football shaped trout, guys. Look at this thing, it's a monster. Look at that fish. Do you guys see that fish? It is so fat. That is such a fat trout. Oh, oh, he just peeled us, guys. Oh no, 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 he's rubbing on the rocks. Oh, oh. Okay, nice and easy. He's not done yet. He's not done yet. That's one thing, guys, you cannot forget that these fish up in the mountains are so strong, they are so powerful. Oh, come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh my goodness, look at that fish. Look at this fish. Oh no. I have no idea if he's hooked well. No clue. Oh. Oh no. Oh, come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, it's massive. This thing has to be, geez, that has to be two and a half pounds or something like that. Maybe three pounds. That's a big freaking trout. All right, we're not going to horse him. That's one thing I've learned since the last time being here, guys, as I think I was horsing those fish. So I've got the drag just set a little lighter, just so that when he runs, that he's not going to self pull the hook. Oh my goodness, look at this fish. Look, oh, oh, he's, oh no! Oh, oh, he's running. Oh no, 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 He's completely running. I don't want him to get wrapped around a log or something down there. There's lots and lots of logs. Come on back, come on back. All right, we're not gonna need this net quite yet. Not gonna need it quite yet. Come on. Come on, baby. It's way out there. Oh, geez. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, he wrapped around a little branch. There's a little branch on the line. Not liking that. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, he didn't like that. Oh, he did not like that. Guys, this is a massive fish. That is such a large fish. That thing is huge. Oh. It looks like he has the hook completely in his mouth. So that's a good thing. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Look at that fish! Oh, oh jeez! Oh jeez! <laughs> this is a monster trout! Oh my goodness, guys! Oh yeah, he swallowed that thing completely. Guys, he's the size of a salmon. Now we're gonna eat this fish. Um, this is gonna be breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next two days, probably. Look at that tank of a trout. <laughs> so in order to bleed these fish, you can just stab him right there. That's his heart. You can actually see the blood kind of pumping out of there. So we're gonna stab him in the heart from both sides. 
Then we're also going to cut the gills. What I'm really curious about is what this guy's been eating. All right, so it looks like no eggs or anything. That's always nice to see that it's not a breeding fish. I'm not seeing any male or female reproductive uh, organs inside. So I'm wondering, just based on the size and everything, do you think that's a triploid? Looks like it's definitely been eating a lot of those freshwater shrimp, but there's a couple of, uh, look at that, that's definitely some kind of fly. This trout is so like fatty and oily that my hands are all greasy. That's the biggest mountain trout I've ever caught or seen in my life. As you can see down there, there is snow. We can bring it back to camp and put that fish on actual ice. That way we can like totally preserve it. I wish I had my climbing helmet with me. All right, we made it down to the snow. All right, we're gonna shove as much snow as we can into those pockets. All right, there we go. We got our snow. Now we gotta move to hopefully catch some more fish. Oh, it feels so good to know that that fish is not gonna go bad. I think this looks like a really good spot because it gets really deep right in front of us that should hold a lot of fish. Now what we're gonna do is fly fish with, I hope you guys can see it, just a little, little ant pattern fly. Used it briefly down on the trail there yesterday. Oh, maybe we can get a, a trout that's patrolling and cruising around over here to bite. And I'm sure you guys have also noticed by now that you can see me from down there. You're kind of like half underwater again. Um, so that's that's what's up guys. We're gonna like try and catch one of these big old trout right there in front of you So you can watch the fight underwater Come on Starting to get a little better at the whole casting thing with the fly uh, fly pole. Still not great at it. So if you guys see me doing anything wrong, let me know. What I have happen when I'm fly fishing is that my line ends up just all scrunching together when it lands the water. I don't get that perfect uh, layout of the line. That's just what I struggle with fly fishing wise. One thing I've learned is you got to fish out of the wrist a lot more. Um, I seriously appreciate everyone's comments on all the help that you guys give. Um, I've learned a lot uh, just from, from the community. Oh, damn, got ambitious. I'm just not getting any bites here, but what was gonna show you guys real quick is how to purify water with iodine tablets. If you lose your filter or something happens, I just, I don't know, just like with fire, you know, I feel like you should always have like multiple ways to make fire. I like multiple ways to purify my water too. There, we just need one. So the directions for these uh, tablets here are that you're supposed to use two uh, per liter. So I etched in a line here that says 500 milliliters, one tab. So I know that if my water is full to this point here, I can pop one in there. So what the iodine does is essentially it sterilizes the water. So any little microbial things in there that would be dangerous to humans when we drink them uh, will get killed by the iodine. Read the packaging, follow the directions on that stuff. So we can't drink this for another 30 minutes, which hurts because I'm really thirsty.
Oh, well, what the? I knew there was something wrong with the stove. There was literally a spider inside the vent air vent hole. A spider, it, it was like, not getting enough oxygen and it was because there was a spider stuck inside the stove he just crawled out so he's unharmed <laughs> that's crazy Look at that nice and golden brown on that skin. Let's give this a try. We're just gonna go right for that big piece of trout. Oh, man. Mm, a little bit of potato. Man, serious trout means serious pin bones. <laughs> Ooh, they're our best part of the skin. Oh, so oily. We're going to make sure to eat every single piece of that trout. We're not letting anything go to waste. Can't afford to up here. Little belly fin. Tonight, we're going to cook up that tail, too. A lot of you guys have been telling me to not let the tail go to waste. Fire, fire. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes, we did it. So I'm just gonna roast that trout head over the fire. Looks like the meat around the fins here is done. Look at that big old rainbow trout cheek. Mm. They say the cheeks are one of the best parts of the fish. All right, this is just because so many of you asked for me to do it. Why is it that the wind always blows where you're sitting? So do you want the tail crispy? Well, that piece is cooking, let's try this darn tail. It's really hot. There's a bunch of bones in there, dude. All right, let's have a real talk, guys. What is this with the tail? Just the tips there. That's okay. Yeah, if you get too far in there, you'll all of a sudden, yeah, it's almost like cartilage or something. Oh, no, I can't do the cartilage. Oh, we're, we're done with the trout tail. <laughs> like, the flavor was not unpleasant. It literally does kind of taste like bacon. I would actually nibble that off, like, every time. Uh, from here on. So thank you for recommending that.